Hi guys, welcome to Alienware's Law Lessons of Saint. Today we have a special guest, Chris Fluey. Hey, how's it going? Brandon. Chris, good to meet you. Uh, my name is Chris Cluey, and I played in the NFL for a little over eight years. Now I'm primarily a troublemaker. So today we're going to talk about building our playbook. And Chris, you're in the NFL, you know a little bit about that, don't you? Yeah, I do, and a lot of people may not realize it, but football plays and League of Legends plays are actually very similar to each other. All right, let's see how they relate. So we're going to go over a couple situations where you can make these big plays in solo queue. All right, so we're going to talk about doing a four-man dive on the bottom lane. And usually you want to do this when your mid laner has a little bit of control over mid, maybe somebody that's pulling somebody out like a LeBlanc. And what you're going to do is you're just going to push the minion wave all the way into their tower. You can have the jungler come and help you if you can't do it on your own. And then you're just going to start going down the river and come through here, uh, which is the entrance to their jungle, and try to get around behind them. And uh, another important thing about this dive is make sure that your bottom, bottom lane pushes the wave up so it's meeting the tower right when your uh, mid laner and jungle get to this tri brush right here. You want to, it, the timing is very important on this. So what if it's uh, what if it's warded? What if they what if they see you coming? The thing is, is wards don't really matter because their mid laner is trapped. He's trapped right here, dealing with that minion wave that you pushed up. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario for them is their junglers down there waiting to counter yank it. And if you have like a really bursty mid like LeBlanc, mm -hmm. and you four four people just dropping all their damage mm. down on somebody, yeah. you instantly kill them. And like the one tower shot or the two tower shots, mm -hmm. none of that's gonna matter. Yeah. So they're, the best course of action they have at that point, just ditch the tower. So mm -hmm. either way they lose out on the tower or like they lose out on all their vision here and you can even take dragon afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, so so very similar in, in terms of football to uh, to a play action where you're, you're setting up a run play, setting up a run play, and then boom, you're shifting to play action. And all of a sudden, you know, the linebacker has to respect the threat of the run. He's got to he's got to stay in mid and, and protect that. But now your receiver's streaking deep and you can hit him for a big play. All right, so another thing we're going to talk about that's not really that common in solo queue, but it's really common in competitive play. And mm -hmm. It's common for a reason. Two of you wanting lanes when you have really bad uh, picks. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in solo queue, you don't get to pick your, your top lane or last. So right. You get it with some really, really ugly counter pick. Like, people pick Bane into Renekton or something. <laughs> and like, well, you can never get on me. I'll just do you. <laughs> yep. So the way you deal with that is you 2v1. And I'm sure everybody has seen a 2v1. And they're like, well, I can do that. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Because you should have goals behind your 2v1. And is it, are you going to dive that person top and just kill them and try to take the turret and progress the game? Or are you going to freeze the lane? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over talking about the dive. So with a dive, uh, let's assuming that your 2v1 is top, uh, your 2 is top and the 1 is on the other side, purple side, mm -hmm. red side, and your jungler is going to be starting down here on red buff because you want to start the opposite side of the 2v1 is uh, because you're going to start your red and then you're going to do your jungle route and of course, you know, get blue and then you're going to start making your way top. Okay. And the real important thing here is that the 2 that are top, you mm -hmm. need to not push the wave very fast. Right. right. In a normal lane, you want to push the wave fast if you want to hit level 2. In this, you want to slowly let the wave build and pile and you want to do only last hitting. Mm -hmm. So that way you just get this massive creep wave that just starts piling up, piling up, piling up. It'll be like right here, this huge wave about to hit the turret, and your jungler will be coming up through the river. And uh, if he decides to stay and hold that wave, he's only level one, he hasn't got any experience, mm -hmm. you can just dive him with the jungler. And a real important thing is, is try to make sure that your support takes the first hit because mm -hmm. they do the least amount of damage. Right. And of course they can just take the three turret hits and then flash out. Mm -hmm. And then that'll leave your red buff, double buff, level three jungle. Mm -hmm. You can do the most damage. Left. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, and it's um, you know fundamentally it's it's very much the same as if you have a matchup uh, in in the NFL like Calvin Johnson versus a normal cornerback or defensive back, in that that defensive back is not going to be able to cover Calvin Johnson on his own. There's a reason he's called Megatron. He's very very good at what he does. Yes, <laughs> and so what happens is then you start cheating the safety over for help because you 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 have to 2v1 Calvin Johnson because he is that good. Take him right, exactly, just to take him down. And so and so it really is. It's a bad matchup and. Instead of trying to beat your head against that, just you know, one person versus one person, coaches understand. Okay, we need to help over there. We need to, you know, we need to shift resources over there so that we have a better chance of winning the game. And it's very much the same as this. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. And you, you lose a, a little bit of uh, pressure, I guess. Right. Same it, thing as in football. Exactly. Your, your guy down here is getting a little bone. Yeah, you're you're gonna be a little weaker in your in your coverage in in the middle and the other side, but at the same time, he's not gonna beat you for that big play, which might hurt you later on in the game. Okay. Yeah. It's not exactly the same as league. Yep. Chris, mm -hmm. so uh, 
really big thanks for you to come out here to do this with us. And I know that you had an Alienware laptop. It's getting a little old for you. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty sweet laptop. It's it's doing okay. Well, we got you an even even sweeter one. Wow! This is actually your laptop. Whoa! Right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's like fully loaded. It's got Damn. SLI, best processor, pretty much like everything that you get best stuff. So. That's pretty freaking awesome. I. I don't know what to say. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Alienware. Oh, hey, thanks for coming out, man. Like, really good to have you. And yeah. Awesome. Thanks. All right, cool. When the ball's coming in, you want to keep your elbows together so it doesn't squirt through and hit you in the balls. That doesn't feel good. So, comes in, cradle it in, and grab it like that. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> 